Hello, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. I wonder if I can get a better voice quality by hooking up this um, microphone, which I always do, but I never really see that old good quality that I used to get. Actually see it. So I wonder what's going on. So let's see who we have here. First things first, I got to clean this screen a little bit better. Just one moment, guys. Just a little bit of a... That's better, isn't it? Okay, good. There we go. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people. They're all among gap. <laughs> so, so looks like we have one person here. And we now have Hassan Tarvi who just joined us. Remember, guys, don't forget the protocol age, gender, and where you're tuning in from. And it's quickly followed by CMH2THJ. That seems more like a, a nuclear code, but <laughs> welcome. It says, hey, my name is Corey. I'm from Boston. When my OCD took... To okay, we'll come back to you, um, Corey, as soon as we get to you. And let's say hello to everyone. I guess everyone is only three people, so <laughs> hello. And we have Aman here as the first batter up. And he says, hey, Mehran. He says, hey, Mehrabani. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he uh, says, hey, Mehran, when I go in public, let me read this. People stare. People start... I get super conscious. People start or stare. Get super conscious about my being and feeling myself ugly. <laughs> why, why would you disrespect what the universe has given you and that is the unique you? You are unfortunately comparing yourself with other people or other looks or whatever else. It's like comparing the shoes you're wearing to other people's shoes. Comparing the car you're driving to other people's cars. You should be focusing on what you are getting, what service you're getting out of that shoes, out of that car. It gets you to one place to another. That is your life. That is what you're striving to make better. And that's it. Stop comparing yourself or what you own or don't own with anything else that other people may or may not own. This will just bring stress to your life and takes away the enjoyment of what you have and makes you constantly be in comparison between what you got and what other people got, which loses the whole enjoyment of what you got. Listen, if I have an old bike and I never had a bike and I'm riding that bike, instead of enjoying the fact that I have a bike and I'm experiencing this movement into the air, into the, you know, uh, riding the bike and the, the wind blowing to my face and I'm experiencing movement and mobility and ability to go places and, you know, maybe jump over this or uh, turn this way or that way. Instead of focusing on that, you're focusing, oh, that guy's got a better bike. So you're losing the whole experience that that old bike can give you. Just enjoy what you got. And then strive to get a better one later on. But don't lose the opportunity for that happiness and enjoyment and the pleasure and the joy that you can get from that what is available to you. It's like I'm hungry and I want to eat and there's some kind of, I don't know, bread and cheese or found somewhere that is nice and clean and I'm eating it and constantly thinking, but you know, the spaghetti that I had last year was more delicious. I'm going to lose the moment that I am in. 
and I'm going to lose the experience of enjoying the delicious taste of that cheese and bread. And instead, I'm projecting and covering it up with some non-existence thing that it's neither here nor there. Why would you do that? It's silly to do that, isn't it? Because you can't even enjoy what you're eating when you're not in the present moment with that what you're eating. Why do I sound Irish? I don't know, laddie. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so the same thing here. Why do you keep constantly comparing? So I'm ugly. Un I'm ugly compared to what? Must be comparing to something, right? So you're comparing. Just be proud of who you, who you are. Have you not seen these really, really ugly people that you can call? And they're with gorgeous women. Why? Because they don't see themselves ugly because, in fact, in their mind, they're not. And once they feel they're not, they act as they're not, and others will also follow the energy that they're exuding rather than focusing on their um presentation physical presentation they focus on their energy the way they treat them their mentality their manners their morals endow yourself with education endow yourself with good manners and morals and values and so on and educate yourself so when you're there you're not there with the limited thing that was given to you your physical ability you got to enhance this box however it looks with so many ornaments, so many amazing information and wisdom and experiences, which will make this, whatever looks, more handsome and more shiny as ever, and regardless. And the one that is coming without any effort and is a handsome person, if it's not educated, if it's not got the things that the wisdom and experience and the good heart and the manners and morals that you could acquire and train yourself to be, it won't even seem to be handsome anymore. Girls are not really so hung up on, in the same way that we are hung up on the beauty of the girl. Even us, who are all visual, when we eventually get together with a pretty girl, and if she's not proper or attending to her duties and being what her responsibilities are attending to those, we lose interest, regardless of how beautiful it is. It won't be someone to build a life with. We'll let go because there's only so much value to that sexual presence. Eventually, we want quality, psychological security, sense of responsibility, taking on the weight of the, shoulder, uh, the, weight of the life on, their, on our shoulders. What contribution are they doing to that life other than just eating and enjoying and being pretty and that's it, nothing else. Isn't that all you, you expect from there? Why don't you expect anything more? Why is it that I always sound Irish when I get to the end of the discussion? I don't know, laddie. <laughs> so anyhow, let's move on <laughs> and stop this nonsense, I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so stop making fool out of yourself. Don't try to entertain people. Your problem is that you're trying to make an entrance. You're trying to make an impression. You're trying to get assurance by being a clown and hoping that somebody will say, oh, yeah, good. And then you think because they said good, then that kind of is going to replace something that you're not happy with. First of all, you shouldn't be unhappy about anything about yourself, number one. Do Two, just live your life. Don't be an entertainer. If it's called for, you will. If it's not, you won't. All right. Mm. Interesting tea. Roasted dandelion. All right. Now, we have 
Hassan says, I'm from UAE. Hassan, why is it in trickle information? You know the information that I ask is gender, age, where are you tuning in from? You just told me where you're tuning in from, UAE. What about your gender? I know your name is Hassan, <laughs> but these days, <laughs> we got to ask. <laughs> we can't assume Hassan is a man. So, <laughs> you know, so we have to be politically correct. So <laughs> maybe, uh, no, actually, <laughs> many people maybe have a male name or a female name, but that's their screen name. Like they like a character or an actor, so they put their screen name with that name but in fact they could be a woman but they're using that screen name or you know thumbnail so really that is uh, I've, I've experienced that here with so many people that their name and even the little thumbnail was a male name but they actually were women or it was a female's name and picture but they were actually men so that doesn't help me to know who i'm speaking with so i need age gender where are you tuning in from there we go. CMH2THJ says, it's my name to the highest journey. I, <laughs> I don't understand that, Corey. Could you kindly speak uh, in terms that I can understand, such as uh, gender, age, and which country you're watching this video from. Uh, I'd appreciate that, because uh, I don't know, nobody's name that I heard is CMH2THJ. That seems like a serial number on a, I don't know, an engine or something. <laughs> don't tell me that's your name. Okay. He says, hey, my name is Corey. I'm from Boston. When my OCD took a turn for the worst, its theme became HOCD. I found your channel at that time. You helped me a lot. I'm fully recovered from intrusive thoughts. Ah, delighted to hear that. Delighted to hear that. I constantly go Irish. I don't know what this tone. So, <laughs> delighted to hear that, laddie. All right. It's Scottish, isn't it? It's a mix up, mix up there. So, <laughs> we have CMH2THJ uh, helping the channel with uh, $5 um, super chat. And thank you for that. And built differences, sir. Please help me. I'm scared. I'm worried. And I'm even more scared that I'm not always, that I'm not always shocked and scared. What the fuck are you scared about? What is this business of you guys? Don't even hear what I'm saying in all these videos. And keep repeating your own goddamn narrative that has got no scientific base what are you scared from what do you think happens a thought has a power that you're not homosexual you're heterosexual and then thought suggests a homosexual idea and then suddenly you think this thought is so powerful that it's going to make you to be someone that you don't want to be like homosexuals would think the thought is going to make them heterosexual they're fearful of that and heterosexual are fearful that the thought is going to make him homosexual and they're fearful of that how powerful is this thought and if that's so why can't this thought cure people from the diseases that they have as simply i know it can it can be helpful but as simply because that's a different thought it's not an intrusive thought that's the thought that you will instigate with energy in it and that is why it will help you to feel better about some illness that you have but on other fronts, why this thought that you're so scared of its powers, why can't it teleport you from here to somewhere else? You thought of it. You can think of it. Why don't you have a million dollars in the bank by thinking? 
I mean, you say this thought is so powerful that can turn a heterosexual to homosexual and a homosexual to heterosexual and change genders back and forth. And sometime now and the next year, another one and the next year. If this can be happening, then this thought is a fucking powerful thing in this world. And then, therefore, why doesn't it ever come in and imagine a million dollar gold coins, millions in the bank for you? Why doesn't that happen? Why nothing that you want happens with these intrusive thoughts? Why is it there is always something negative? Why? Because the negative is the result of your love for what it is opposite of what HOCD attacks you. And you're trying to protect it so much. Your attention is so much on that. And HOCD attacks what you are. So always, if you even didn't know what your gender is, like if you're born in an island, nobody else around, and you had no idea what female or male is heterosexual or homosexual is if you were being hit by intrusive thoughts of homosexuality you can be damn sure a hundred percent that you're a heterosexual because hocd always attacks opposite of what you are in other words if it's attacking you with thoughts of homosexuality then that's because you're heterosexual if it attacks you with thoughts of heterosexuality, that's because you're homosexual and you're afraid not to be, to each his own. So understand this and downgrade this belief that you have created that thought is powerful. Brain is me. I am the brain. What brain says I must become. Bullshit. Brain is as is as, a, as an organ as your intestine is. Your intestine is responsible to get the food, transfer it to energy, and the poop, the rest that is not usable, out. Shits it out. That's its job. And the brain is no different. It has a job. Its job is to make thoughts. It makes thoughts. And as the exhaust of this activity of uh, of material process making thoughts all day long there are certain intrusive thoughts also is created by it hmm? those are the shits that somehow biologically we can get rid of it through intestine but mentally it lingers because you somehow hang on to it instead of letting it pass hmm? it's like if you it was up to you if you would fart you would keep the fart Oh, I got to see what it is. But you it's not up to you. That's why it passes. You got to treat thoughts, intrusive thoughts, in the same way. When it appears, let them pass. Don't hold them. Try to investigate what it is. What did I eat? Why does it smell this way? None of that. You don't do that with your fart, do you? You just understand that it's a bodily function that is no use to you, and you just let it go because that's what it needed to do. It, it exhaust. Brain also has feces, refuse, exhaust, malfunctions, just like intestine malfunctions, you get diarrhea. But you're clear that this is not you. You don't say, oh, diarrhea. I've always been a diarrhea. This has always been normal. I never had it. Now I'm going to change to a person who has diarrhea all his life. You don't say that. It's very clear to you. That this is not what I've always been. This is not the balance that I've always experienced for me. Therefore, I know I got to help it to go back to its normal self for what it was for me. So you will eat, I don't know, rice and yogurt and you stay away from fatty stuff until, you know, it corrects itself. You train it, retrain it. Well, the same thing with the brain, but you don't treat it that way. When the brain goes malfunction, you don't recognize it as malfunction. You think, no, even though it's diarrhea, oh, diarrhea it is. You, you don't do that with your biological uh, malfunctions. Why do you do it with your mental malfunctions? You think brain is infallible, is perfect. So what it does, it's me. That's why when it comes up with intrusive thoughts, it must mean something. Why? Because brain is the entity, not me. I am part of the brain. No. Brain is your apparatus. You're not the brain's apparatus. You have to understand this. So when the brain malfunctions, you got to recognize it as a malfunction. I don't like these thoughts. I'm not homosexual. 
or if you're homosexual, I'm not heterosexual. You know that in your history. So when it malfunctions, you say, well, I'm not this what the brain is suggest. I'm not this intrusive thought. So why would I think that because it showed up in the screen of my head, it must be me. It's not. I choose. I select. I judge the production of this organ that its job is to make thoughts. Not whatever it produces. It's deity. It's true. It's correct. Now I have to prove it not being because I'm not. No, you're not. And you recognize the malfunction of the brain. And then you take steps through teachers, doctors, um, uh, psycholog psychologists, a psychotherapist that teach us how the brain works, movement of the mind, movement of the brain. And through the experiences, scientific experiences, through brilliant doctors, neurosurgeons such as Dr. Speary, Dr. Penfield, Dr. Owen, Dr. Schwartz, um, not Dr. Schwartz, Dr. Leibert. These brilliant surgeons, neurosurgeons, and neuroscientists, through their experiments, have shown scientifically proven that you're not the brain, brain is not you. There are aspects of you and the mind that the brain cannot even reach. So how could you be follower of the brain? Brain is part of you, not you part of the brain. So then you would be all these teaching and education, educations, information available, you educate yourself, and you begin to rewire the malfunctioning brain. And I've explained in many videos about this malfunction that has a lot to do with amygdala, anxiety, call it nucleus, striatum, and all these other uh, interaction between the parts of the brain that is breaking down sometimes. And like any electronic uh, equipment, it malfunctions. So then you got to learn it and help it to be rewired, retrained. And then, just like your intestine, it falls back to what it always been. But you're not supposed to panic every time that it goes fucked up. You're supposed to be the teacher, the healer. You're the master. You see one part of the entity, what one equipment of, of all equipments that you own, you have in your body is malfunctioning. You help it. You train it. It's like you're a team and all different members of this team got to be trained, helped to be able to play the game properly and exactly as it's designed. So you too, you got to help your, you know, uh, organs who malfunction to be healed. If your hand gets hurt, you don't say, oh, that's how it was always. No, you will heal it, help it, massage it, eat proper nutrition. You know what to do. You lay off of it. You help your knee or whatever it is that you got to do. Kidney, liver, all have to be helped when they go ill or they go malfunctioning. Brain also goes malfunctioning, goes ill. So you got to learn how to help it to heal back according what the original program has been in your case. Whatever your gender is, it can malfunction. It doesn't just malfunction for heterosexuals. It malfunctions for homosexual, any other gender. So you got to learn how to treat your body, mind, and body. Not just recognize the malfunction of the body and then anything that happens to the brain or intrusive thoughts and all these uh, weird things to you that shows up in your head. You say, oh, that must be I'm changing. No. If you can change it this way, why doesn't it change it the other way? And how many times this change is going to happen in your lifetime? It's all bullshit. So be patient, educate yourself, and stop panicking. I mean, afraid of. And tell me your age and where you're tuning in from and gender all right christina says hi meran nice to see you female 28 new york city says my question is how to stay present with planning for the future i notice that when i think of the future I start feeling anxious. Thank you. Well, because when you think about the future, there is a division that is created between your vision, your imagination, your thoughts, that is 
imagining some scenario at a time that is not now. It can travel. Brain can go through different dimensions by imagination where the body, physical body, doesn't. So you create that separation between mind and body where your body cannot accompany your mind, your imagination, and your imagination in order to, your mind in order to imagine what you're imagining cannot be here where your body is because what you're imagining is not happening. It's not the moment. Is not dependent on your efforts of the now. If the efforts that you are imagining is being made in any time and space, in any dimension other than the now, the separation between mind and body is created. But if you are going to be making a creating or fixing or repairing a watch that you're actually remembering what you studied about how to repair a watch, which is in memory, is not here, but you're applying it physically and using it through your physical means to actually repair a watch now. So the mind and body are both together because you're focusing on how to fix this even though you're using the previous recorded information about repairing a watch, but you're actually focused on using it now. So the mind and body both are in the present moment. That's where mind and body is coordinated because your information in your brain is being used to along with your effort, physical efforts on the same thing on the same time and space right there to fix this watch. That's where there is a unity between mind and body. But when you're imagining something in the future and there's no way that your body, other part of your existence can help to bring to fruition what you're imagining to accomplish it, then there's going to be a stress because you feel like you're losing a chance when you have already imagined to do something, but you can't reach to actually make it happen. Why? Because the time to make it, the future is not now. Your mind is in the future. Your body is here and cannot help it to fix and make that what you're imagining happen. So you're creating a division. So understand what you're planning is only in mind and in writing. It's like you draw a building as an architect and you say to me, I'm stressed because what I'm drawing is I can't see it in the street because you're drawing it. You haven't had the chance to buy the land, prepare the land and start construction. It's an idea. The idea is not the actual. The idea is an idea for when the time comes for the actual to become a reality, then you will put it to place and then you will have no anxiety. But when you come up with some kind of a drawing and you expect it to be already there somehow, it's, it's not possible. Then you become anxious. Why are you anxious? If you're planning for something, that means you accept that is not happening right now. That is not in actuality right now is not in existence right now so already you know it's not in existence why would you panic because you think now that you've thought of it you should arrive to it but the time to arrive to it is not now the preparation for it to make it happen is not now you're not prepared for it then you become anxious as if you're losing an opportunity and time is passing and you find it so urgent that it has to be done in order to propel yourself to that level that you want to arrive and you feel you're losing time and opportunity because your mind has gone first and there's no way your body can actually join it to help make that what you imagined to come to fruition. So understand that I'm just doing a drawing. I don't expect this to be happening. But unless I have a specific example, I can't go further than this because it could not make sense because I don't know what it is that you're planning. Is it something urgent? Is it worry about will I be able to do it or not? Well, you wouldn't know until that time comes and you're prepared to do it and you will see if you are or not. But you're trying to make some idea 
to become certain in its possibilities at the moment which that time in the future is not there you're not prepared for it and then you suffer i'm not prepared but then my mind says i want to do it but i'm not prepared to do it so there's something that i should be doing but i can't do it so it brings anxiety for you that's as far as i can go otherwise uh, i need some specific uh, target or the plan to be able to use that for my explanation christina Ah, I don't know if it was helpful to you or not, because most of these questions are closed box and I have to feel it or think it according to what I think it might be. And we have Neshizer, it says 23 male Australia. Thank you for that. Why do you think many people got HOCD during the lockdown and isolation? Well, actually, I have a video on that, which I'm going to refer that to you so you can watch it at your pleasure and convenience, as that would be a long explanation. The video is called HOCD and the Pandemic. Uh, so I'm going to put it up here, the link for you. There's a link. In short, Pandemic has resulted with all its lockdowns and all that resulted in most human beings, if not all human beings, deviate from the routine, the order in life. And the mind finds security not the same way that the body finds security. Body finds security in physicality, in physical environment. You're sitting here, your cheeks is here, your ears here, eyes, nose, arms, your limbs are here, knee, legs. And physically, in this physical space, you're sitting, everything is here, you just checked, you, are, you, you verified, and you're in your apartment, the apartment door is closed, locked, you're in a good part of town, there are no dangers, you feel safe. That's how the physical part of your entity feels safe. But the mind doesn't, the brain, I use them in the same name right now for this particular conversation, otherwise brain is different than mind. But the mind finds its security in a different way, not in physical area. Mind finds its security in the routine of things, in the routine of life, in the order of life. And this order is created by engaging in certain mechanical processes. Mechanical processes are the things that you do. You get up, you brush your teeth and do your business in the bathroom, you put your clothes on, you go have your tea or coffee in some uh, coffee shop or your breakfast in some restaurant or you make it at home, then you go to school or you go to your job, then you meet your friend, you go to the gym. These are the things that you do. These are mechanical processes. Through these mechanical processes, you create a routine. Uh, through that routine, you create a order, an order in life. The order in life is where the mind finds security. Why? Because it's busy doing things. So, mind finds its security through being busy, through occupation. Occupation in regards to things that form the routine of your life, your order, meaning certain mechanical processes. During this fiasco, 
all those activities, mechanical processes have been limited and changed or possibly stopped. So the routine of your life has been broken. The order of your life, therefore, has been stopped, broken, interfered, interrupted. The mind is no longer active in what it was active as the norm, routine, and the order of life. So it has lost its security. How could it be secure when it's not engaged in what has always been used to be engaged and create that business and occupation to feel safe? Mind finds its safety, security in occupation. All of that has been up, you know, uprooted. And so what it does, it goes, tries to find intrusive thoughts because so many information has seeped through the consciousness is there and its job is to make thoughts, but it's not being used. Its ability is not being used in something that you would want it to accomplish, such as the routine of your life. That's been broken. So it doesn't have that to follow, that what it always followed to create that busyness and occupation and security and help you to accomplish things. Its mandates have changed. It's gotten on. It's just like running wild. So it hangs on to anything that has seeped through the consciousness, things that exist in the world somehow through the mediums and other ways have found its way into consciousness as what is happening and exists in the world. So it picks up any of that and tries to create an occupation. How can it create occupation and business? Not by complimenting you, because if it compliments you something positive, non-intrusive, such as you're a good-looking man and you like all the girls, all the girls going for you. You say, oh, thank you very much. That's the end of conversation. But if it tells you that you are some gender that you're not, suddenly your back goes up and you start defending what you are because you are not what the brain is suggesting. And you start debating with it and fighting and arguing with it. And that argument back and forth dupes you into thinking that the brain is an entity that you got to prove something that you are or you're not. And that creates that occupation and busyness in the brain, which is trying to find security. And that's hence starts all kinds of intrusive thoughts, because that's the only way the brain can get you engaged to argue with it, to create that occupation, busyness. And through the busyness, it finds security. That's one of the reasons this happened. Of course, the rest of it is the malfunction of the carded nucleus and the amygdala, role of amygdala and, and anxiety and all the other things that we've talked in the HOCD videos. All right, there you go. Now you don't have to watch that video. <laughs> Listen, uh, built different. Still, you're not telling me how old you are, where you're coming from, and all that. So I'm sorry. If you're not going to give me that information, uh, I wouldn't know who I'm talking with. So, And you keep repeating that you're afraid of this, afraid of this. You're not really hearing me at all. So you need to watch the videos. I don't think um, you really want to help yourself. You're coming up with all kinds of nonsense faking awareness you can't fake the fucking awareness what are you talking about stop this you know i get really pissed off when people constantly repeat the nonsense that have been feeding themselves and they don't even care about what science says they don't care about what logic says they don't care about what experiences they don't care about psychology say they don't take about care about what i'm saying none of that you keep repeating and that's part of your OCD. You have believed some nonsense and you can't get rid of it because you have accepted that what nonsense comes overrides your awareness, your intelligence. Now you're calling some other stuff. I'm faking awareness. You can't fucking fake awareness. That's why it's called awareness because that's different than the brain. All right. Don't piss me off. Just listen. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Okay, Charu says, hi, Mehran, female 33, India. Hello, Charu. How are you, dear? Thank you. I'm, I'm good. As good as I can be, Charu. <laughs> says, I'm meeting a very nice guy who is very respectful, thoughtful, and caring towards me. 
I'm struggling to accept his looks unconditionally. He's overweight. Um, good part is he's already working on his weight, but I worry I may not respect him fully in any form. I want to see him get in good shape. Health soon. How to accept unconditionally? You don't have to. You don't have to accept unconditionally. Hmm? So you can help him though, if you like him, if you think he's got potential, and then help him. Simple. Obviously, he's there because he likes you. And obviously, he wants to hold your hand. He wants to kiss you. He wants to have sex with you. So you help him and say, sure, that could be possible, but not now. And it's not a punishment. You tell him it's because I care about you. And I think you could be someone that we could maybe build something together. And for that reason, I want to hold off some of the things that you like until you actually lose this much of weight. So set a goal for him. You lose this much weight, then there'll be a little bit of, you know, I don't know, fooling around. You lose this much weight, then there'll be a little bit more fooling around, and so on and so forth, until, you know, you know the, the extent of it is, you know, is between you two. But so that's what you do. <laughs> Instead of thinking that you should accept him the way he is. But also remember... Someone could come into your life that is physically fit and all that, just like you like it, and is a nice guy. You accept him, right? But there is no guarantee that he's not he's going to stay fit. What if afterwards he becomes fat, overweight? What are you going to do then? You've already married him. So these are not really things that you can hang your hat on as any kind of a certainty. It can fluctuate. Just like the whole marriage can fluctuate. People fall in love, get married, and they get divorced. So what happened? Things change. So the guy is overweight. You want to hold it against him. But you don't hold against the guy who's not overweight. You don't hold the future against the guy who's not overweight. Because he may be fit now, but what guarantee do you have that he won't be uh, overweight later on? You don't question that. You accept him. And you don't consider the possible future. Hmm? But when it comes to this guy, while you accept that in that fit guy may not be fit later on, you don't worry about it. But you don't give the same chance that the other way around of it, of course, that this guy who is not in good shape, he may actually turn out to be in good shape. Or if you're not sure about it, well, help him to be in good shape before you guys get serious. And he will. Because that's the best time to get a man do stuff for you <laughs> when they haven't been able to have that certainty and commitment from you. Hmm? So you don't have to accept it, but I know you're valuing his attention to you and you kind of have him almost selected, but his physical is in your question. But physical is something that almost everybody can fix if they really have enough motivation so create that motivation for him whether now or in the future how, however you plan it help him to be as fit as he should be for his own health and also for your you know expectation for the aesthetics of your man all right
Uh, Aaron says, hey, Miran. Hello, Aaron. Thank you, Corey, for your introduction. 31 uh, years of age from Boston, Massachusetts. Says I'm Irish as well. Okay, then. <laughs> oh, you're talking to Bill Different, I guess. Yeah, okay. I thought. Aaron says something a lot of people need to learn is that this overthinking is just a pointless conversation with the brain. There we go. Aaron, are you going to give me some of the credentials that we expect? Age, gender, where are you tuning in from? Build differences, Maren, does HOCD affect your driving skill? Listen, uh, you haven't even responded to what I asked. How do you expect me to keep answering your questions? I need to know your age, gender, where you are tuning in from. Three little things that everybody should include it in their comments every time they make a comment. So I know who you are, where you are. I can have a mental image. Is something about you, cultural, because I know which country, age, gender, I know how to address you, you know, so. <clears throat> bubble, bubble. Says, my ex has already a new girlfriend. May I please ask everybody, for heaven's sake, listen to the protocol that is necessary, is a prerequisite to ask a question. Gender, age, where are you tuning in from? So, if you won't mind, just three little things like M or F, Whatever, however your gender is recognized by you, and then age, and which country, which city you come from. These will give me enough information to know how to address you. And if you're not 18 years old, I want to make sure that you have permission from your parents to be here. Because this is for adult discussions, and I want to make sure that it's known by your parents that you're here and talking to me. Bubble Bubble says 26 Germany female. Thank you for that. Let's go to Bubble Bubble. 
No, we got to go to, to Majid Bluri because we have a... Sub, sorry about that, guys. That's a tradition in YouTube, and I have to follow it. We have a super chat from Majid, five, uh, 449 pound, or was it euro? Is it pound, I think? So Majid says... Now, where is Majid now? Majid says... Sorry, it's not much, but your advice is priceless. Thank you for all your help. You're quite welcome. Thank you for being here and sharing your time with us. So we go back to next on the list, which is... Uh, let's see, who is it? Um, I think it's Column, because I still don't have any answer from Build Different, so then we just bypass... And go to column. Column says, column 26 from England. Thank you for that, column. Says, whenever I feel angry, I let the thoughts through due to my temper, but regret them afterwards. They can't change my sexuality, right? You know, column, you've been asking that question over and over, and that is just an OCD. Look. If thought, as I mentioned, had the power to change your gender, well, how many times do you think it has this power? Once or every few years? So you'll be heterosexual, homosexual, heterosexual, back to homosexual, and heterosexual, and homosexual. Where is it going to end? And how is it happening? And is, you know, it, it, can't, it, it can't happen like that because it's just not, reasonable it's not scientific it's not reasonable logic so you can see that when something like this keeps coming and going then why would it have to be limited to once if it can change you from this to that why can it change you from that to this and then later back from this to that and but that's not the reality of life through the history has it We've had billions and billions of people through the history that have majority lived their life as what they have been born as to their death. And nothing ever happened or changed. If they were born homosexual, they lived as homosexual all their life and enjoyed and accomplished their life. If they're born Heterosexual, they lived their life, all their life, as heterosexual and enjoyed and accomplished their life. So what is this business of thinking, I'll be changed? If you'll be changed, then what are the, uh, isn't there a chance that you'll be changed back? And do we see people going back and forth? We don't. So what is this fear? It's only OCD. It's only thoughts. And thoughts don't have any power that you do. These are thoughts. Can you understand that? No different than thinking that you have a million dollars in the bank right now, but if you go check it, you don't. But you say, what if I do? Or if you have a million dollars, it's no different than thinking, oh, my money vanished. Maybe somebody stole it. Maybe the bank stole it. But you go check it, it's still there. So these are thoughts out of fear of losing what you love. You love to be heterosexual. There is a fear attached to it. What if you're not? You love your money. There's a fear attached to it that what if it's lost or stolen? You have a girlfriend. There's a fear attached to it. What if she leaves me? If you're married, there's a fear attached to it. What if he or she leaves me? If you have a car, what if they scratch it? There is always a fear attached to whatever it is that you love that you want to protect the most. That's when the brain attacks it because it thinks by creating that hoopla, you will be more careful about protecting it. It's trying to help you to protect, but when it goes malfunction, it overdoes it. And then it becomes a question all the time. Why? Because when such question by prefront, uh, orbital prefrontal cortex is suggested, there's a lever in, in basal ganglia, in striatum, called caudate nucleus, that is supposed to naturally, automatically, shut down the intrusive thoughts that are suggested 
by prefrontal cortex that are not in line with your values. When carded nucleus malfunctions, it doesn't do its job and doesn't shut down the, the um, intrusive thoughts as they show up. When it doesn't shut down, it hovers. And when it hovers, you get fooled thinking, oh, if it's not disappearing, it might mean something. No, it means there's a malfunction in the signaling system of the brain, and you got to focus on that to fix that, to retrain the brain, to help it to actually move on with the thought comes. It's like a ship in the ocean that is moving on, and the engine kind of clunks, and it slows down. And you say, oh, it reached destination. No, it didn't reach destination. The engine has clogged in and is not working. So you got to focus on the engine to fix it. So it continues its travel instead of thinking, oh, it's the destination. No, it's a mid middle of the ocean. ocean. There is no destination. It's breaking down. You got to help it to fix it. The same thing. If the thought is hanging over in the screen of your head, it doesn't mean that's what you are becoming or have become or you're changing. It means there's a malfunction. That's why the thought doesn't disappear because every single human being on earth, all eight or nine billion of us, or however we end up being, this, look, this looks like we're not going to be that many with the fucking thing that is going on trying to kill everyone with their bullshit. But everyone in the world has intrusive thoughts. Every single one of us. But because carded nucleus does its job, it disappears. But when it breaks down in the signaling system and it doesn't disappear, it seems to you, oh, I'm changing. No, it just there's, there's a malfunction, like the ships. There's no destination. It's just malfunction. you got to fix the engine so it will continue. So you got to help the brain to retrain itself so it will end up Again, getting back on the horse and does what it's designed to do, which to dissipate the thoughts that are constantly created in your head, but they're not relevant to you, and it shuts them down and they dissipate. They come and dissipate because the job of the brain is to make thoughts, 80, 90,000 thoughts a day, and none of them are relevant to you. They're irrelevant to you. You don't even know the brain is making it. The thing is, the brain is an apparatus. You, you, the me, uses the apparatus to make thoughts according to what you want to accomplish. Learn something, accomplish something, um, figure out something, design something, produce something. These are your thoughts. You pick up specifically certain information out of your consciousness that all this information has somehow seeped through your consciousness, through the mediums or whatever it's been in existence in the world and you become aware of it. And then it picks up one of the, you pick up what is relevant to what you want to do and you make a thought with it. That's your thought. But the brain apparatus itself, the brain itself uses its own ability and its own capability, its own apparatus to make thoughts and makes thoughts unbeknown to you about all the things or whatever things that have seeped through the consciousness that exists in the universe, exists in the world, and it's become known. To the brain and it's irrelevant to you you're oblivious to it but it makes its own thoughts then caught it nucleus comes in and shuts it down based on your values that these are intrusive hmm? but when it breaks down it doesn't shut it down when it doesn't shut it down it's like the ship that simply has broken its engine and it's just hanging around for someone to fix the engine so it can continue its travel so when your system is shutting down is not it is not working well and it's not shutting down the intrusive thoughts Instead of thinking that, oh, I'm changing, this is the destination, this is how I am. No, understand that there's a malfunction in the brain. you got to help the brain to repair itself. That's how it works. All right. We go on to... We have Sid here. He says, just wanted to say hi to my lovely, lovely friend. <laughs> Where have you been, Sid? Mail 33, Manchester. Hope you haven't forgotten me. No, I haven't forgotten you. <laughs> I haven't heard from you for so long. Hope everything is okay with you. And the move has gone through okay, and uh, everything is hunky-dory. 
you haven't kept me up to date in um, after the move to UK. Hope you're keeping healthy and uh, coping with things. <laughs> Majid says, hello, Mehran. How are you, my man? Ostard? Or is it Ostad? <laughs> Hope you and family are and have been well and safe, Majid. Thank you very much, Majid John. Thank you very much. Aaron says, does anyone notice how most OCD thoughts are always focused on the past and the future, but never the present? The main way to stop is focus on the present moment. There is no such thing as past future. Mm, you've been watching the videos, haven't you, Aaron? Proud of you. Um, glossy tie. Says, I'm going, look, can I please, I, I don't know, oh, there it is. I'm female 16. Mm. Glossy, I hope you have uh, informed your parents that you're here on this channel. Glossy says, I'm going great, but I don't have patience. The only thing I'm waiting for is these thoughts to go away. Don't wait. Learn to teach him by ignoring them. I've explained it to many other videos that you recognize the intrusive thoughts as what it is. You recognize it. Oh, there's intrusive thoughts. And then you call it for what it is. Oh, that's intrusive thought. It's not me. That's HOCD. That's not me. So you call it for these. And then you focus on what it is you got to accomplish on that day. And you ignore this. After you recognize this present, after you called it for what it is and labeled it, then you just ignore it and go about your business. So in other words, you recognize, you make a mental note, the brain becomes aware that this is something you don't pay attention to. It cannot get you get a rise out of you because of this. And every time that it shows up and you ignore it by having these things done, it learns that it cannot get your attention by this. And it learns that you don't pay attention. You ignore it. It learns it shouldn't produce something. And after a while, because it sees that you don't spend energy, you don't exchange energy with these things shows up. So, And it wants to create exchange of energy between you and the brain so it can get occupation and through occupation it gets busy and through business it feels secure. You don't give it to it what it's looking for through these kind of thoughts that are created. And it learned that these thoughts will not create that. And you will train the brain to learn to have a place for it, to find its security through your mechanical processes, the routines that you do in life, which part of it could be meditation and other activities that you have. So it learns to settle down, to decrease the activities in the brain, to decrease the ripples, imperceptible ripples of the brain, to become slower, smaller, smaller, and the ripples become very small, and therefore the level of intrusiveness goes so down that it's no longer intrusive because it's not unsettled, it's not frantic. You know, when the brain starts worrying about you losing what you really love, it becomes very active and goes nuts and trying to do whatever it can, bring all kind of alarms and ring the bell and be careful. And you just want to say, listen, everything is cool, Mr. Amygdala, just cool. There's no danger. Don't have to keep alert me about something that doesn't exist and therefore it disappears those thoughts but if you keep paying attention to it you can't disappear something that you're shining light on it hmm? how can you expect not to see something that you're putting the projector lights on it so your attention will go there the more attention you pay to these intrusive thoughts the more bright their location is and the more they will be noticeable. The more you ignore him is like the less light you put on him. It'll become dark place for them. Nothing is shown and they're not visible and they disappear. 
they they simply fall off the road. <laughs> you won't see it. I don't know how to say. So that's what you do. Instead of exchanging energy and giving that light to it to become more visible, that intrusive plot, you ignore the you 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 uh, what's the word for it? You deny him of any attention, and then therefore there is no light shown on him, so they can't be seen. Yeah, and when they can't be seen, they just fizzle and die because they're hungry for attention. You suffocate them from with that by not giving them attention and they'll die that's how you treat intrusive thoughts not to pay more attention to oh what it says oh my friend what do you do when somebody attacks you in the street oh please please don't let, let me go oh, please. then they come more they become strong but if you say hey what the hell are you talking about what do you want i'm gonna call the police now or whatever you pick up a stick or whatever it is <laughs> so they kind of think it twice or they may even flee because you're strong. Hmm? Same thing. Thoughts show up. You ignore them. You just look at them up and down. Say, oh, fuck off. That's it. Don't start arguing, trying to prove to the brain, no, I'm not this, what you're suggesting. I'm not this. You know, I'm, How dare you? You're trying to prove to a fucking organ that you are who you are when you're the boss and the organ is just, you know, like your shit is hanging on to you. The organ is there because you're there. You're the boss. If you weren't in existence, none of these would be in existence. So you're the master, not the brain that suggests something through its malfunctions, for heaven's sake. All right. <sighs> Will you guys ever get that? Okay. Okay. The Mr. Arifal says, Hi, Mehran. No question tonight. Just dropping to wish you a nice day. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate you stopping by and saying hello. Marcel Casimir says, Dear Mehran, I have been dating a girl the past two months. Congratulations. When the things started a bit serious, we had an argument. It wasn't anything serious, but she said she's finished. I was angry, so I said, okay. She didn't write me after for days. After that, she wrote me again, just to argue again. <laughs> okay. And tell me again that she's finished and she doesn't know what she wants. I tried to find a solution, but none of my words meant anything to her. Should I move on? She is being drama queen. I'm 21 from Hungary. And how old is she? And you should definitely move on. This kind of girls who create such big deal out of nothing, and they already say, I'm finished, then they call back and say, I'm finished. They're just simply not in a place to be ready for a real serious relationship. And at age 21, 
neither one of you are really ready for a serious relationship, but you should be reasonable to understand that um, relationship needs work and needs a bit of uh, understanding and compromise rather than trying to, at that age, show your power that I am the boss, I say what it goes, with, all that bullshit that you guys think it's important. In reality, when you want to have a relationship, it's all about understanding the logic and what's best for both of you and be fair in finding what's best for both of you. Not what best is what I say. That's fucked up. That's childish. And until you actually grow out of that age, you will behave childish. And these are all childish stuff. But it's part of that age. At age 21, you hardly know yourself, and she hardly knows herself, to know what exactly standards that you expect from your mate. At this moment, you hardly know yourself, let alone know what kind of girl you want. But when you're like treating it as just a boyfriend, girlfriend, an experience, a warm-up game type of thing before the real competition, you know, like how we train soccer before the tournament, <laughs> these are like simple relationships and don't make it so serious at age 21 because you're still growing to know yourself, let alone know what kind of relationship you're looking for and if she has all this stuff that you expect or not. And even if it looks like that you both hit it off okay and we're both compatible, yeah, at age 21, most people are compatible because all they expect is to be, I don't know, fit and handsome or good looking and pretty and then have a little money and go here and then, you know, watch a movie or have dinner and just have sex. And pretty much that's all you can understand. But later on, your expectations go higher when your consciousness expands further with challenges of the life and your expertise and your education and your level of responsibilities goes bigger and your then your expectation goes bigger or higher from uh, the girlfriend uh, or you know the the relationship that you're looking for and then you will begin to know really what kind of person you are and what kind of girlfriend you want and she will know what kind of boyfriend she wants because you've all grown up to a level that you can see things from above rather than from here not seeing most of the stuff that is above and just looking at simple things and getting into arguments because you're trying to prove who you are to this one person that is in front of you rather than to yourself and to the world through your education or expanding of your horizon and understanding and wisdom and experiences and so on and so forth. So don't take it so hard. She wants to go, go. Adios, amigos. Free world. I mean, as much of it as is left. So she's already said I'm finished and she reiterated it, but another text a few days later, I'm finished. Said, okay, are you finished or are you finished? Which one? The first one or the second one? <laughs> you move on. Don't wait for her. If she comes back, wants to talk, then you'll talk. Otherwise, she already said you're finished. You just turn around and say, yeah, you are, I know, you already said that four days ago. Is this a new finish after finishing? Is there such thing? Or what, what are you texting me? You want to talk? I'm willing to talk. But you want to be dominant? I'm not interested in some dominant situation. So let me know. And then that's it. If she does, she does. She doesn't, let her go. All right. Cricket lover says, sometimes I didn't worry by my thoughts what it means. Nothing. You're not supposed to worry about your thoughts. <laughs> there are thoughts. The, the problem is that you guys think thought is you. You think thought is a human being. Thought is like the fart. It has no power. It's stinky, but really can't change anything. It will eventually dissipate. So it hurts you, affects you, bothers you, pisses you off because of the qualities of it, because you think the source of thought is you. But it's not. The source of thought is just an organ. And it's got no credibility. And it's got no responsibility. And it doesn't know shit. It's not an intellect. It's not smart. It just guesses things and makes up what it's supposed to do. Thoughts. Brain is a thought manufacturing entity. That's it. But every time they make something, you think, oh, it must mean something. No, it doesn't. Can you get that? It's like a, I don't know. I don't want to 
Very be politically correct, I guess. So. Dylan Sue says, hello, glad to see you. Thank you. Welcome. Please let me know your age, gender, where you're tuning in from. Kul or Kul says, I learned to not identify with my thoughts. Use your mind. Don't let your mind use you. Remember, mind and brain are two different things. Hmm? There are aspects of mind and you that brain cannot even reach. For understanding what I just said, you may want to watch this video of mine, which is based on the presentation that Dr. Egnar made in his video in regards to experiments that was done by Dr. Sperry, Dr. Penfield, Dr. Owen, and Dr. Leibet. It's just brilliant experiences, Nobel Prize winning type of experiences. And uh, it shows that not just philosophically it's been proven that you're not the brain and brain is not you, but now the modern science through neuroscience and neurosurgery scientifically has proven that you're not the brain, brain is not you, and there are aspects of mind and you that the brain cannot even reach. So stop thinking that the brain has any brain. <laughs> brain is dumb. It's an organ. It malfunctions. It makes thoughts. But none of those thoughts mean anything. Only your values. You roll in life by your vetoes and choices. You judge thoughts. You don't follow thoughts. You judge what brain makes. Don't follow what brain says. Anyhow. Okay, that what I want you guys to enjoy watching is uh, this video, which I have recommended it a hundred times. I don't know if you guys have listened or not. It's a long one. It could be boring, but I tell you, it packs lots of good information. Lots and lots of good information. It helps you to become wiser and be able to deal with your messed up psyche, which we, all of us have that. Better. Steve Matheson is here. Steve says, Mail 49 Ireland. Thank you very much for that, Steve. Says, glad I could catch a small part of a live broadcast. I listen to most of your live videos after the event. Great content, Mehran. I have learned so much from you. I thank you very much, Steve. Thank you for stopping by and sharing this with us. I appreciate it. Very kind of you to spend some time with us and support the channel by your presence and giving us this wonderful, positive feedback. Aaron, 19, male, heterosexual, England. All right. Thank you for that. Bubble Bubble says 26 Germany female. Wie geht's heute? And Bubble Bubble says you forgot my comment. Did I? Did I? Bubble Bubble, let's go back to Bubble. I think I did address it, didn't I? Bubble Bubble. Bubba Bubba says, my ex has already a new girlfriend. Our breakup was a month ago. She's a model, and I'm insecure. Our relationship couldn't flourish because of my un unistress. My unis, what is unistress? Stress, and I would have loved to do all the things they do. Okay, she's a model, but you know, there's a lot more in a relationship than just the sexual experience of it, although that's very important. But regardless of how beautiful that new girlfriend may be, or a model, as you say, all that beauty and 
all that amazing fitness and whatever else that you want to call as beautiful as she might be or that model will all dissipate if they don't hit it off on the consciousness level you have no idea how turned off you can be from a model or not if her manners of values and behavior is not in line with yours I have given that experience of my own to you guys several times, the story of that amazingly beautiful, beautiful, extraordinary model-looking girlfriend or girl that I went out with, which I couldn't count my blessings if that opportunity came on. And the first words that came out of her, mind, her, her mouth at the dinner table, I lost interest 100%. Because I saw that's not a girl I just want to have a conversation with or have things in common. I couldn't see it. But through her features and beauty, I thought she's the perfect, most beautiful, perfect girl that I've ever seen. Was it? Why? Because there's a lot more to a compatibility than just the physical interest in each other. Because the relationships happen up here in the between in the consciousness, in the bonding in the consciousness level. This whole physical thing is a prelude, is a is a is an invitation to get to know each other. You know, you see a pretty girl, sexual interest, and you go forward, and maybe you guys hit it off for a first while, and you know, be intimate, but eventually it gets to the point that life becomes real. And no longer the superficial or the sexual intimacy would be enough for that relationship. You expect a lot more, and that law more, one of the two, or both of them, don't have it. Don't have that capacity, understanding, or uh, that level of com compatibility on the conscious level. That's when it falls apart. No, you know, it's it's not a secret. You've seen many uh, actors and actresses. A handsome actor and a gorgeous actress and they get together they fall in love and get married and so they're both fit and handsome and beautiful so what happens why do they get divorced because that's not what it takes to keep a relationship going even though it's beautiful and wealthy and everything that they are the consciousness that's where the relationships take place that's where the relationships make or break so if you think she's all that beautiful, okay, fine. But you may have a lot more to offer. You shouldn't compare yourself with some other woman who is just seems to be a model, as you say, because it's not the human being is not all made out of the physical shape that they have. There's a lot more to them. Don't you see many women are not as beautiful as the one that you're talking about, but they're much more happier, they're happier and more successful in life. And many men are not maybe as fit or good looking, but they have focused on their building a life and they have become very comfortable and they have a good life. So stop comparing. And if there are some things you want to fix in yourself, fix it. But don't envy. This is an experience. That's why you've, you've gone through it. And now you're a, a person with more knowledge about yourself and... Uh, more ability to judge situations based on what you expect and what you want and what you don't want. So you look at it as an experience, as a lesson, rather than a punishment or a devastating event. No. So what? Next, somebody else. <laughs> And Glossy says, 16 USA female and my parents know I'm watching you. Okay, thank you very much for that. So, bubble, bubble, I hope I answered your question. And we have Obama, your mama, 18, says, male 33, Tampa, Florida. Oh, land of free, Florida. The only place in the United States that is free and people are still in charge of their own bodies and they can do what they wish without the hoopla that everybody else is going through. I think some, to, to some extent, Texas is also like that. And says, 
Mail 33 Tampa, Florida. X wants to stay friends and still calls, but it's not going anywhere. And I want to be in, the rela in a relationship. Should I stop talking to her? Yes. Completely, yes. I feel she's just stringing me along. Yes. She's trying to create that psychological security for herself. She's trying to feel confident by having a man paying attention to her, which is you, and to feel that she still has somebody, but really doesn't have somebody, but looks like it, so makes her feel good and safe and secure and confident. So when somebody's hitting on her or she approaches, she's interested in somebody else, she can have that confidence taken with her because of you in the background. And therefore, once she established some kind of a new relationship, she stops calling you. So uh, there is, if she's already left you, ask her, why are you calling me? What's your purpose of calling me? What's your purpose of being in touch with me? Didn't Weren't we together? Weren't we in touch? And that's, what you that's when you decided to sever it and not to be in touch. Now that we are not in touch, you call me. But I have no reason to feel this call is of any interest to me. Maybe it does something for you, but I'm a man. I don't look at it the way you look. Talking for me is not enough. I want to see you be part of the relationship that we were, do your duties as a girlfriend. I do my duties as a boyfriend. We have our jobs or whatever it is that we decide to do. And I want to see you attend to your duties as a woman in a relationship. And I would do my duties as a man in a relationship. But what is this calling business? What am I getting out of it? What is it building? Where is it going? Nowhere. It was somewhere, but it went nowhere. And now from nowhere, you want to keep it nowhere, but still want to have the benefits of being together. It doesn't work for me. So please don't call me anymore unless you want to have a substantial discussions and uh, see if uh, we can rekindle what we have. And if not, have a good life. I wish you well. If there's nothing else, I would like to go and attend to my duties. Good night, dear. Put it down. <laughs> that um, soundtrack was uh, original, so there's no copyright on this. <laughs> All right. Uh, and... Uh, Quinzo Ginky, okay, says, hi, I have a question, first time on this stream. Welcome, Quinzo. Uh, I need to know where you're tuning in from and uh, which country, so that will help me out. Quinzo says, what grounds constitute a justifiable reason to get back with your ex? Mail 22. Give me your cultural background. Like, give me where you're living, where you calling, where you watching this program. So I know a little bit of cultural background. Uh, what grounds constitute a, suit, a justifiable reason to get back with your ex? I don't know what reason she had to leave. So we got to know what was her reasons for leaving. Then we can remedy it by expecting a certain kind of a, uh, a you know, interaction, reaction, or discussion on that particular reason. When I don't know that, I can't come up with something decent because it has something to do with what happened. What did she do? Like, for example, if she tell me she cheated on you and she went, well, then that's the end of it. Don't come back. Fuck off. Yeah? So, um, so I need to know specific what has happened. Justify. That's very general i can't uh, generalize every relationship in that way well perhaps i can say, say generally justifiable reason to get back is when all the reasons that you guys broke up have been discussed and the compromise has been made and understood and uh, remedied so that's the answer to that general question column says thanks for answering my question i apologize for repeating it just needed to know I'll always be heterosexual and I will find a girlfriend. 
you need to understand that by constantly trying to get assurance, that is not something you need. Assurance is not necessary. Ignoring these need for assurance is necessary. Because the more you do, the more you're creating a habit. And once something becomes a habit, it's very difficult to get rid of it because you wouldn't even know why you're doing it because you've forgotten all of it. Just imagine an obsession and compulsion relationship. You do the compulsion because there's an obsession. So you do the compulsion. And when you do the compulsion, you feel good. Ah, I feel safe. I feel good now. I feel balanced. And when you feel that way, what's secreted in your brain? Dopamine. Hmm? The all good feeling always comes with dopamine. Or even a news of something going to be good, it also secretes dopamine. Hopefulness creates dopamine. So after a while, you're not doing the obsession, you're not doing the compulsion because the obsession show up, showed up. You're not doing the compulsion because of the obsession. You are doing it a little bit for that, but you're also now, after a while, having done the compulsion, you're doing it because of that, ah, feel good thing, which is a dopamine. So after a while, you're not doing the compulsion for the obsession only. You're doing it to get the dopamine. Now you're addicted to dopamine. And after hundreds and hundreds of times of doing it, you're no longer doing it for, a for the obsession or the dopamine. Because that repetitious has made it to become your habit, which has been presented by Dr. Grable from MIT using her uh, through her graduate postgraduate study student um kyle smith which the experience in rats showed that the training takes place but after a while training for a certain function certain behavior the rat is not doing it for the reward the rat is doing it for the dopamine and after a while is not even doing it for dopamine is actually doing it as it becomes its habit. That's when it becomes difficult to get rid of it. When anything that you do a lot of becomes your habit, it becomes more difficult and dangerous to get rid of it. Very difficult. So that's why the more you do assurances, the assurance seeking becomes your habit. No longer you're doing it to deal with the obsession. No longer you're doing it because it makes you feel good and get dopamine in. It becomes your habit. And you don't even know why you're doing it. You're doing it for habit. And that habit becomes very difficult. In fact, Dr. Grable, through her experiences, was the first one to prove that the cluster of behavior, cluster of actions, could also be considered one action to the brain. For example, Dr. Schwartz explains in his own experience of smoking. He said he smoked for 30 years at the time he made that presentation. He said, but if you ask someone who just bought a cigarette package, opened the cellophane wrap, took one of these sticks out, death sticks, out and put it in his mouth, and then got fire, which is contrary to what we are accustomed to, so not supposed to be close to our face, but he got fire two inches away from his face. And you ask that person, start smoking. You ask that person, are you aware that you just got a, a pack of cigarettes, opened the cell phone, took one out, put it here, and flicked a fire close to your face? He says, no, I'm just only aware of smoking. The cluster of movements and actions were translated and seemed to be to the brain as one movement, smoking. None of that was of any um, sequence to him. None of that was any of any interest or, or noticeable thing that he was doing. A cluster of behavior became one. It was considered as one, one move, one action. That's when it becomes a habit. That's when it has become a habit. And that is very difficult to get rid of it. That's why... Then when something like this happened, you got to relate 
the habit to its effect on your health. Because whenever you connect a habit to health, it encourages that person, as difficult as the habit may be to get rid of, the health, connecting it to health of you, it will encourage you and help you to get rid of the habit. And that becomes a little, and that was actually physically proven by a stimulating part of the brain, as I remember the study was. Anyhow, so stop seeking assurance column. That is going to become a habit, and then you will be doing it without having a breather from it, and that's not good. Jan K says, Hi, Mehran. I wanted to thank you for all the hard work you put into your videos. They helped me a lot during my life. We need more people like you. Thank you very much, Jan. I appreciate it very kindly for sharing that with us. I just hope that we will be more visible on YouTube. Somehow, whether it's because of the content or, uh, I don't know, sensitivity of it or their, whatever the hell is their community guideline or whatever it is, we are not visible. Even though we are so helpful to all people in their relationships, in their understanding the movement of the psyche, in their thoughts and intrusive thoughts, handling and management, and lots of information here. But somehow, my videos get, I don't know, 500, 200, 300 viewers, and that's it. And then over the years, people find it, there'll be 20,000, 60,000, 100,000, 300, 400,000. But why does it take that long when some rubbish on this YouTube suddenly gets, I don't know, uh, 100,000 in one day? And they're not really talking sense about the relationships or intrusive thoughts and whatnot. There's only, uh, you know, a few channels that are really uh, good in discussing intrusive thoughts. And one of them comes to mind is a channel that I've seen some of its content in the past, just to know what's on uh, YouTube. And I wanted to address this OCD and HOC so on. And there's a channel where a gentleman from, I think, Ireland called, uh, they call me Jesse. And I think he's a very genuine guy who has a good heart and wants to help people. So I want you guys to check his channel and see if you can get benefit from it. And another one, I think it's called, um, um, there's another one uh, that is uh, that I remember I watched a while, while, while ago because I wanted, again, I wanted to know what's, what's, uh, what's out there as far as addressing that... Um, If I can find it, I forgot her name. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, there it is. Uh, the channel is called Christy Hodges. Uh, I think she's very good, too. So you might want to... Uh, Christy, uh, obviously, is a lady. And uh, Jesse, obviously, is a gentleman. And uh, you might want to check their channels because I think they have... Uh, they can be a good complement to what you want to... Um, um, arm yourselves with understanding. So, uh, otherwise... Um, where was I going with that? Um, yeah, Jan K was telling me about the, the channel, so I just thought I'd throw these two channels out there. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to have some um, other points of views, and you know, perhaps it would be of some interest, so you can check those channels as well. Um, so I'm delighted that you like the channel and the content, and I hope that you'll continue benefiting from it. Uh, we have over 3,000 videos on this channel, and most of it is in regards to breakups and relationships and the movement of the psyche and about thoughts and consciousness and fear and desire and ego, mechanical process, material process, 
order in life. And then we have hundreds and hundreds on OCD and HOCD, in which we discuss the interpretation of the thoughts that shows up in your brain. And then we have another playlist, uh, lots of videos in that one as well, which is not talking about interpretation of thoughts. It actually is talking about and proving the separation between brain and you. And I think that's fundamentally important it's to notice and learn and understand the separation between brain and you, that you're not the brain and brain is not you. And it's been discussed with many psychotherapists, and psychologists, such as Dr. Schwartz, and uh, in his book, Brain Lock. And then you will, you will be able to free yourself from this nonsense when you understand that you're not supposed to follow your brain and the brain's uh, production as that is just fart in the air, scientifically spoken. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's go to what we have here is, oh, they call me Jesse. Oh, my goodness. I, you're here as well, so you just heard me. What should I said? I shouldn't have said something bad about you. I, Jesus, I should have known. <laughs> well, glad that you're here, Jesse. I just was talking about you. It's, it's, it's a, we have an expression in, in my mother tongue language where I was born. It says, if you're talking about somebody and then you hear from them, it means they're a legitimate son <laughs> or the daughter. <laughs> so obviously... <laughs> <laughs> that was a pleasant experience. More power to you, Jesse. More power to you. And uh, we have Marcel Casimir. Casimir. So she's she is 22. Oh, I see your girlfriend. All right. Yeah. Oh, she's even one year longer. She, okay. I've already responded to that. So Marcel says, and please excuse me for my bad English. No, your English is fine. Stop putting yourselves down, guys. Just imagine whenever you say, sorry for my bad English, you're seeking attention. And don't. And don't let people think that they're so uh, superior to you because you happen to choose to be a humble and nice person, but they don't necessarily look at it that way. Just imagine, when you're saying, sorry for my bad English, understand there's so many people that speak English, but they don't speak a word of your language. How about that? So you've got, you know, one leg up compared to them. Hmm? So don't, just stop apologizing for no reason. I know that's a thing to do. I do that too. I mean, I, I did, but not about English. I never apologize. Sorry for my bad, no. I always knew that I know something more. I've, I've got my own language and some English at the time. So I knew I was, you know, having a little bit extra than not enough. So Marcel. Obviously speak French, right? And the Nashizer says 23 male Australia. Why do you think masculinity is at an all-time low because that's the political narrative there's nothing wrong with masculinity this is bullshit of toxic masculinity should be thrown in the lake it's garbage it's the way to subdue the alpha male and when you subdue alpha male then you can shit all over the people's head because there is no more protectors as alpha male remaining that's why you start attacking this you know masculinity as toxic masculinity what's toxic masculinity if there was no masculinity in this world, we wouldn't have half of the things that we have. More, 90% of it. Everything that you see that you're using, these women who are feminist and talk about feminism and equality, I'm all for equality. Go get educated, get a job that you like, be a lawyer, be an accountant, be a, a doctor, be a surgeon, be a pilot, be whatever you want to be. Women, man, doesn't matter. You can all do it and you're. I'm all for it. But trying to be a man when you're a woman, talking about feminism, that I'm better than you. Why do you want to be better than me? You're unique. I'm killing the world and killing myself to get to you. Why do you want to be like me? I don't want to get, I'm a heterosexual. I don't want to get to another man. I want to get to a woman. So please remain female, remain feminine, remain a woman, remain that beauty that the whole universe is centered. 
you women have lost your own values and instead you're constantly trying to chip away from masculinity. If we men weren't here as important as you are, that we go to wars for you guys, we die for you guys, protecting you, we cherish you, we worship you, we want you, we desire you, as much as we do that, don't you guys understand that we have a reason to be in this world? We men that you'd call toxic masculinity, if we weren't around, you wouldn't have railroad, you wouldn't have buildings, you wouldn't have a place to live in, you didn't have all these inventions. Hmm? Yeah, some inventors are women, perfect. The more the merrier, but mostly are done by men. Buildings are made by men. Earthquakes happen, we men are going there. Wars happen, we go to war and we die for freedom, which we're all giving it to shits right now. After all our parents and grandparents died for and fought for, and we are now having governments taking it all away for shits. And we are sitting and shitting in our pants and not doing anything. So yes, we're going to get this and then this and then that and then this other one, whatever you say. But there's still male and masculines who are rising up and trying to deal with this, along with the female and the women who are strong and coming up and rising up alongside. So we have a place in this world. Stop this bullshit of, you know, toxic masculinity and all these questions about masculinity. Masculinity is a necessity. There's never been a time more necessary to be masculine. The world is going to hell all because you're trying to diffuse masculinity. We have a place. Femininity has a place. Masculinity has a place. Without women, this world cannot go on. Without men, this world cannot go on. Why do you, don't you guys understand? Respect masculinity. Respect men. You women out there who call yourself feminist, all bullshit. You've lost all the respect and the love that you always had. For what? To become like us? You can never be like us, and we can never be like you. We complement each other. We need each other. But we need you to be you, with all the beauty and amazing and organization skills and motivations that you bring to our hearts. We need you, but we need you to be you. We don't need you to be us. We don't want us. We want you. So if you understand that, you have a place, very important place in this universe. And we too. You have a very important place in this universe. And you better learn that our place is just as respectable as yours is. And that's the end of that conversation. All right. Marcel says, um, thank you for the great advice. I will do like you said. Okay, Marcel. And cute. Mm. So much passion in my speaking. I need some more tea. By the way, this is a new found that I mentioned last time. This is a roasted dandelion root. It was first, it was kind of surprised taste, but I got used to it. It's something between tea and coffee. I don't drink coffee because I don't like caffeine, but tea, even though it has caffeine, I drink lots of it. But this is something between. So it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting um, kind of a cozy drink. So cute says, hi, Mehran, 23 female, London. Says, I have had beauty as a key value from childhood. Now, as a young woman, I constantly fall short of my own ideals. And my insecurity prevents me from living a wholesome life. Look. Beauty, from top of my head, I didn't think of this example, but it just came to me as you, I just read your question. Beauty is like having money. After a certain amount of money, it doesn't matter how much more you got. Because you can attain all you want with the kind of money you got at a certain level. Anything more than that is just, will go unnoticeable, unused. So if you're beautiful, and you said you are, and that's wonderful, then Expecting to be more beautiful or meeting your standards and being disappointed that you're not meeting 
your standards of beauty or somebody else. It's just nonsense. Because after a certain level of beauty, we men don't expect any more. It's just different, not more beautiful. It's just different. Hmm? So stop expecting all that unreasonability from yourself. You're beautiful. You're blessed with it. Enjoy it. Don't keep thinking that I should be more beautiful. Now that I'm used to this level of beauty, i got to be more beautiful. Is that what you're saying? I hope I don't miss your... And Q says, how do I honor and attain my own values, beauty, without letting it get in the way of my day-to-day -day life and I stop obsessing over it? Oh, I just said, I guess I was right. <clears throat> just understand that you're beautiful. You don't have to enhance it. Because after a certain level of beauty, which you have, enhancing it is just redundant and stupid. The more beautiful you have, the less sophisticated you should wear clothing and fuss about it. Because you already got it. You don't have to fuss with it so much. You don't have to go toward a certain level of perfectionism which doesn't exist, which continues on and on and on, which creates the OCD and just suffer from lack of satisfaction because you constantly think you got to be more beautiful because that's all you got. Instead, start endow yourself with education, with expertise in something, with love for something, and then that will take your focus away from extraordinary attention to beauty and focuses on other things that you can endow your beauty and supplement and at the same time expand your beauty with the non-physical things, which adds to your beauty. Nothing is more beautiful than a beautiful woman who's also very educated and uh, philosophically trained maybe or loves something, is really expert in something. That is where you want to expand your beauty rather than the physical end of it. Go into the, um, the knowledge end of it. Endow yourself with knowledge. That's where the expansion and enhancement of beauty, in your case, in the case of already beautiful woman, would take place. Otherwise, that's a futile search for being more beautiful physically because there's an end to it. All right, and uh, Gaga Oh Oh Halala. Okay, <laughs> says I'm HSD. Says I'm scared that when I get to see my girlfriend again, I won't feel attracted. So what? You think all the girls are always attracted to their man? Oh, they could be making love and thinking about laundry and thinking about tomorrow. I gotta go here do my nail, or I gotta go to school, or I gotta go to my job. You know, many times women are not necessarily as attracted as they before to their man, but it comes and goes. So it doesn't matter. Don't focus on that. Focus on what it is that your choice is and follow that. And what it is your vetoes are and follow that. Live your life by your vetoes and choices. Not that the feeling of right now or the thought that shows up and this and that so forth. This wall will pass if you train, retrain your brain. And... Mahi Senthil. Mahi Senthil, I don't know how to say that. I hope I didn't butcher it. it. says, I'm changing. He told me um, this. I imagine like, okay, the, okay, that's just, I've explained that in the videos. Watch for the video that says exactly your question. Is the title of it has that. Um, Parla says, Dear Mehran, you have missed my question. Mail 30C Australia. Oh, okay. Let's go to P and see where that is. Ah, oh, there it is. So P Irlo says, Hi, my dear. A girl 27 who rejected me. First, I got to know who you are. Are you... Uh, I need to know your age, gender, where you're tuning in from. Ah. Ah, there it is. Male 36 Australia. Okay. Male 36 Australia says, Hi, my dear. A girl 27 who rejected me because of having a hard time to forget her ex. Now left her parents and moved to sharing house 
to live with strangers, but she still acts interested. Well, you know, uh, you are just as much a stranger to her as her where she is, because you you guys haven't established a relationship to expect her to come to you. You're saying the fact that I am in interested in her and she knows me, she should have come to me. Well, that's your gracious heart that wants to help her, but in her mind, she's oh, you were already with her, oh, rejected you, not left you. Okay. In her mind, she's not in a relationship with you. She's still getting over the ex. So to her, you're just as, str as a stranger as anybody else. And she wants to be somewhere that she's not owed anything to them. If she comes to you, then you're the savior, so to speak. And you're letting her to stay with you. So she has to comply to certain things that she's not ready to comply or be in that role. Because she still finds herself maybe committed or faithful to the ex because she's still hurting. So you got to let her be where she wants to be and pull away. If she's interested, let her co uh, contact you. And you contact once in a while. Don't pursue her. Uh, because she may be using you to remedy her um, problem or heal herself from the hurt. And you will think that's a signal for you to approach. And you will approach more. And she's not ready. So she'll start repelling you. But she'll keep you around in order to make herself feel safe and good and kind of um, kind of replace what she's missing. But that's not genuine, and you don't want to be there. So don't contact her. If she contacts you, respond. But always let her contact you. Don't pursue her, because you think, oh, she's a prey, and she's injured. Let me save her. No, let her save herself when she's healthy in her brain and her situation. Then let her choose. If he doesn't choose, if she doesn't choose you, fine. Choose somebody else. You stop going after the lame birds or the injured birds, thinking it's easy because they can't fly away. Let me catch him. No, be brave, man, and go and actually hunt. Hunt the free uh, um, you know, deers out there. <laughs> Go try to establish a relationship with a healthy-minded woman. Right now, she's not healthy, and she's going to be stringing you along and to make herself feel safe and good, and then you'll get hurt eventually because she may find somebody who doesn't know where she came from, who doesn't know her hurt and her injury, and that's what they look for. The first thing that a woman that has told her boyfriend or the boyfriend has seen the shortcomings, in this case, a prospect, you, know about her past, know about her weakness, know about her shortcomings. The first thing that she does once she gets her um, bearings uh, together, she's going to leave you because she wants to go to someone who doesn't know what her weakness was, who doesn't know when she was down, who will think of her as strong and, you know, standing up straight. It's an image that they try to create in other people's head. Uh, if you know too much about them, about their weaknesses, when they were weak, they will leave you. I remember I had a trip coming from Germany to Vancouver. On the flight, there was this, um, it was with uh, Lufthansa. And this German girl was the stewardess. And we get talking. And as I'm interested in people's lives, when they show that they want me to be interested in, we talked and I found out that, you know, the story was that uh, she had a boyfriend. The boyfriend had stuttering problem and was self-conscious and not confident. So she pays for linguistics programming and uh, teaching and repairing the stuttering. And she spends money for him to get this training done. And he learns and he fixes the stuttering and he becomes uh, confident and uh, he, you know, gets his confidence back. And through her efforts and caring, he gets to be a strong a character than what he used to be when he was having this, uh, you know, anxiety and problem speaking and so on. Guess what the guy did? The first thing he did 
he left the girl. The girl, the very girl that spent her money and her time and her kindness to help him to regain his confidence and his problem. This is what most people do. You help a girl who is really in a bad shape, some will respond positively. Some, the first choice they get, the first chance they get, they leave you because they want to go somewhere that nobody knows about their background, so they will look like that they've been always been successful and strong and with no problems and so on. But you know their past, and so they know that you know their weak points, and they don't want that because they're trying to create an image contrary to what the reality of their image was at the time that you helped them and you were there for them. Hmm? So stay away until she, you know, creates her own, you know, uh, resolves her own challenges. And then, uh, you know, you can be in touch with her, but not you. Let her be in touch and you respond. And if she didn't, then move on. All right. Quinzo Ziki says... What ground status is okay? I, I explained that already. Okay, so we go back to where we were. And where are we? HXDTL says, hello, I have an issue. Well, there is a tissue. <laughs> I learned that from the Austin Power movie. <laughs> His father says, if you have an issue, there's a tissue. All right. <laughs> says, says, I have an issue. I'm from Portugal. That's not an issue. That's very good. This 21-year-old, okay. So there is this girl in my class with whom I have grown fond of. And I would like to get to know her better and go out on a date, etc. But I keep thinking in my ex sometimes and I get nervous because I want to meet her and probably date her. You keep thinking in my ex sometimes? You mean about your ex? Who cares? The ex is ex. This is not here. No matter what you think about her or how much you think about her, she's not reality. She's gone. This one is a possibility. Go try it. If she says yes, great. Go on a date. If she doesn't say, well, keep thinking about whatever you want. But don't let thinking of some past girls or ex-girlfriends or whatnot stop you from going forward to find another date. If she says, great, yes, great. If she doesn't, well, you tried at least. That's what we do. We men try. We fail, we fail. We go on again. Next. So don't let that stop you. I still, I, that's what I understood from your, your question. Uh, cute says, correction, Maron, I didn't claim I was beautiful. Oh, well, you are probably, anyhow. <laughs> Every woman is beautiful. I said I had beauty as a key value since child. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Meaning I strive for it. I diet, spend a lot of money, and still don't meet the standard. What standard? Haven't you seen there are many men in love with their wives and their wife is not that model perfect that you have in mind? They're overweight or they have been always or they weren't at the beginning. Now they are or they're going to lose it again. Uh, that's not something that you think that's all why men come. Being beautiful and fit is a good invitation. But the rest of it happens in the conscious. So if you have reached a certain level of fitness and beauty, you take care of yourself, that's good enough. You spend too much time on it, you will neglect the amount of time that you, sh you should spend on developing your mind and knowledge and expertise and your ability to deal with the challenges of life. 
you got to know a lot more than just being beautiful. As we know, beauty itself is not going to be the recipe to keep a relationship going. Many people are good looking and the girl is very pretty. They get married and they get divorced. If that was the remedy, why do they get divorced? Because relationship is not limited to where the beauty starts or ends. It has a lot to do with how you interact and deal with the challenges of life and help each other and be committed and unselfish and so on and so forth. So if you have reached or try to reach or can reach or have reached a certain level of beauty, that's good enough. Because it's never ending to it. The older we get, the more we should be trying to keep that beauty. We can't keep it. I can't look like when I looked like when I was like 30. I had more hair. <laughs> Less wisdom, but more hair. But I'm more confident now than I was then. Hmm? And I have less hair. And older. But I bet you I can attract a lot more quality girls than I could then. Maybe then I could attract them because of my looks or youth and all that. I understand that. And I did. But now there's a lot more genuine confidence as the age grows. And your knowledge grows. You endow yourself with things that are really important in life. Because you've experienced, you've seen what kind of challenges appear. And what you need is like a person has gone to war and come back. That's why he's a general. Because he has seen war. He knows what where the attacks come from. What he should do. How he can defend himself. It's not just about in training hall with the sword going back and forth. Oh, I'm good at it. But he's been in war. He knows the actuality of that experience of life. So with endow yourself with the experiences of life and your beauty and the strength and confidence comes from that knowledge and experience that you gather and the wisdom with it that you go through negotiating the challenges of life rather than relying only on that beauty that is skin deep and you can change now and then. Lose weight, gain weight get older, wrinkle, this and that. You can't help that. But now that you're young and you have time, endow yourself with knowledge and things and expertise. So when these things are not as beautiful as it is today, as we all going toward that direction, you can rely on the reserve and the depth of your knowledge and ability to deal with the challenges of life. And that's where the confidence comes in. And that's where the attraction comes in as well. So a combination would be the healthy balance for what you're looking for, I believe. So my problem is how do I let go of my obsession in the meantime until I get there? Because until you get there, you're not there. So what's the use of keep saying to your father who's driving the car to the ocean, say, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there? It doesn't matter how many times you're concerned about are we there yet, you're not there yet. So stop being concerned about being there when you're not there. You will know when you're there. So until then, you just keep doing what you think you should be doing in the form of knowledge and experience and challenges of life, how to handle, how to manage, and the form of getting your fitness and so on and continuing, but not so obsessed with it because being obsessed with it, it eats away from your opportunity that is available to you at this time for other things and other areas. And you're going to miss that when you're constantly paying attention to this. And this is a skin deep. Is not going to last as long as the knowledge and expertise and the and the wisdom that you gain through life is going to last. So balance it and understand that you will know when you're there rather than constantly expecting to be there because of the vision you have created and you constantly spend all your time for that. That's going to be a waste of talent and time. So balance it a certain amount to this, certain amount to this. It's just like... For a great meal, you got to have this and that and this and this and so forth. You can't have too much of this and too much of that. It won't get a good mix. So you have to balance it, and then will have a perfect dish available for you to enjoy. Same thing. Your fitness, your beauty, you have a certain efforts and time and budget for it. 
and your knowledge, expertise, and learning the wisdom of how to manage life and challenges that comes with it at a certain level, certain allocation of time and efforts to it, and then a combination would be a balanced life until every aspect of your life, including your beauty and fitness and your wisdom and so on, it's going to grow as you grow older and you spend more time on it. But in time, you can't be focusing too much on one thing and lose the opportunity to develop the other stuff that you need for that balanced beauty. It's always about balanced beauty. It's not The beauty is not all physical. It has to be balanced, right? So you're doing what you can do in both realms. Then, therefore, there is no reason to be hasty about it. You have to be patient because you can't help it. You can't put the ingredients in the pot and, and then expect it to be ready. You still got to put it on the flame. Still, you can't expect it to be ready. You still have to turn the heat up. You still can't be ready. You got to still wait, give it time. The time is not something that you can increase it by the increasing the, the heat or putting more water or more ingredients. Increasing these things will not is not the same. It, increasing time, I mean, you can't increase time or make time go faster by increasing like you increase the ingredients in a pot. The time is still going to take time. That time cannot be expedited, cannot be faster. It takes certain time for you to do certain exercises and certain things to be as beautiful as you want to be. You can't expedite that time, that time because your body has certain limit. You can't do more than, I don't know, two, three hours a day exercise. So then that means it's going to take longer time to do it. And you got to understand that. So that understanding will set you free to let go and settle with certain schedule. As long as you meet that schedule, that's fine. So limit your expectation of hastiness to the certain number of hours that should be accomplished and spent on that goal every day. So as long as you meet that two hours or one hour a day exercise, then you're fine. You don't have to worry about anything else because that what you expect will come by this increments of one hour or half an hour every day. So you can't expect more than what you can expect in a day. So limit your expectation to a performance of a certain level in a given day, not my expectation only gets satisfied when I reach that level that I want to expect. You will reach that level in increments of time of, I don't know, 365 days, but you should be focusing on what you can reach and achieve and accomplish in one day, and that should be satisfactory for you for that day and the next day the same. So that will kind of reduce your expectation or anxiety, and perhaps that could be helpful to you. All right. Tatagata Bay Boss says, uh, hello, sir. My... X came back to me after two years. My condolences. <laughs> so, so <laughs> it just mean to be funny. Uh, obviously, <laughs> you must be delighted. We get along together really well now. Okay. We are more mature now. Okay. Uh, do you want to tell me this information that, uh, you know, how old you are, where you're tuning in from? I need to know that, guys. Don't just come out and say, like, if I know you. I don't know anything about you guys. And it says, should I take her back? I thought you just said you already did. Uh, we are more mature now. Should I take her back? But there is my ego, which comes with, the way, what should I do? What ego? Ego doesn't exist. Ego is a program that you get. Ego is not an organ that you got to satisfy. You got to keep it healthy. What ego? She left. She was stupid. Or you were stupid. She left. You could have left. Now she's back. Meaning what? I went there. There was nothing better than you. I'm coming back. Well, that's, that's the, you know, feather in your cap. So maybe she'll, this time she'll be, or just tell her, listen, you know, what guarantee do I have that you're going to be committed to this relationship? Maybe you just couldn't find anybody, and then the moment you find somebody else, you're going to jump ship again. Because I don't know how old you are. I can't continue this unless I know how old you are. Because what I'm saying, it has a lot to do with your age, and you're not giving that to me, so better fess up. <laughs> 
Um, so I can bring that into consideration, your age. She's I'm from India, and I'm 20 years old. She's 21. We dated for three years when I was 15 years old. Oh, my goodness. That was too young. You didn't know what kind of girl you wanted then. 15 years old, anything that is a female, you want it. Right now, too, at age 20, what do you know if she's the girl you want? Why is she coming back? Why did she leave? When did she leave? Yeah? So, you got to discuss this. Why are you coming back? And do you think this is the girl that you're going to actually be? Do you know enough of yourself at age 20 that you know what kind of girl you want for wife? I don't know. Maybe that your tradition is that to get married soon. But I don't recommend it. But I, I know you're going to kick yourself if you miss this chance. Say, oh, I should have had a wife. Because all you think about is sex right now. And if you lose her, if you don't take her back, and then she goes and gets a boyfriend, she's going to kick yourself and say, oh, I could have had her and all that. But when you have her, you're going to be keep thinking about, oh, she left me. My ego is just... you got to deal with these things and don't treat her, uh, you know, unjustly just because you're constantly going to be keeping this over her head. You left me. You were left to somebody else. Or what did you do? And all that's going to be just interrupting your ability to have a good relationship with her she left when she was 18 three years ago and you say you've been together with three years huh. well in this two years well, okay but she shared okay well in this two years she had a relationship and she had sex in that relationship which kind of bothers me and I am from India. I'm 20 years old, and she's 21. We dated for three years when I was 15. 15 to 18. Uh -huh, three years. And then she left at 18. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. So she's not 21. So she left. Okay. She left at, at... You were 18. Okay. That means she left... When you were 18, which is, she was 19, which is two years ago. Okay. I don't know. Did you have sex with her before she left? And had sex with somebody else? Hmm? Were you the... You know, were you each other's first? Because if she left you once, and how long has it been since she broke up with the second one? She just came, she just broke up? When did she break up? So, Because if she has left you once when she was 18, or she was 19, or when you were 18, she's going to leave you again. Because she's obviously... Maybe not. I don't know. There's something I don't know enough. You know, four months ago she left. Okay, she now feels rejected or whatever happened. For She left or the guy left, whatever. And now she wants to feel safe. She, she's coming back to you. But there's no guarantee she's going to stay with you. So maybe you just want to have a relationship with her and get to know each other. See if you guys uh, handle each other okay. If you're going to be okay with the whole idea that she left you and all that. If you can manage your ego. And in the meantime, you are experiencing having a girlfriend and so on. Um, so she dumped him. You didn't tell me. Did you have sex before she left you? Did you guys have sex before she went and had sex with this other guy? The reason I discuss this with you is because I know traditionally something important to you. If it was like a guy from Europe or from United States or wherever, I wouldn't maybe discuss this at all because it doesn't matter. But I know it's something of a, you know, um, 
concern in that culture. So I ask, did you have sex with her before she left you? Ah, you didn't have sex with her before she left you. And then she left you and had sex with somebody else. Uh, that's fucked up. That's going to bother you. So you might want to try it. Just uh, be together and see if you can handle it. And then maybe have sex together and see how you feel. And then you're going to be pissed off after you have sex with her because you say, oh, I wanted to be, you know, the only one and you had sex with somebody else. That's going to create problem for you and for her for a while. Until you break up with her, she leaves you, and then you say, oh, uh, I want her back. Then you get her back, and then you constantly think about this. She slept with somebody else, and that's going to fuck you up again. So you got to deal with that if you want to stay with her. Otherwise, if you think that you don't know if you're going to stay with her, she doesn't know if she's going to stay with you, but at the moment you like each other and you want to be together, then go ahead. Be together, and then maybe two years from now you'll say, okay, we had enough, or she'll say we had enough. But at least you had taken that out of your system and you were together and you tried and you had sex together, which you didn't have before. And then that would be maybe some kind of a um, consolation for you. And maybe you guys hit it off and you decide that, hey, that's not important. It really isn't because her heart is with me. She loves me. She came back for me and I love her and I want her entirely not just for physical because her entity is not limited to her physical she's more than that and she's giving it all to me physical and mental and then you'll be fine so go try it i guess why not why not life is short all right guys i think uh, we answered all the questions and i want to it's time for me to say Wow, it's a long one, was it? Two hours, 24 minutes. Uh, it's time for me to say I love you all. Thank you very much for being here and giving me the opportunity to share a thing or two with you. I look forward to our next live stream. And please promote the channel. Let people know that we exist and uh, we are here to help. And if we can reach more people, we can help more people. So help us to, to promote the channel a little bit more. And... Uh, Okay, so uh, I'm sorry, guys. I have to cut it off right now. We will talk about it uh, some other time or the rest of the questions. Otherwise, it will not be ending. But in the meantime, please uh, try to promote the channel. Talk about it in your social media or you know chat lines or whatever you do. Help the channel to reach more people so we can help more people. In the meantime, be good to yourself and to the others. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Subscribe on my channel, visit my channel, and go through the videos that you might be interested in. Mindthatseekstruth.com is making it one step away to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on Skype and discuss what's concerning you. I'll talk to you soon. Well, we too, like the iceberg, have thousand times bigger powers that is not visible, and we must. Why? Is it something we're rambling on and I expect you to accept it? Or is there actually another power within us? Would you come and help me out? Okay. What I want you to do is put your hands underneath my arms uh -huh. and just lift me up. There we go. Okay, now. That's my physical part, right? Mm. Same thing. Again, with that. just want to see if there's any difference. Go ahead. Now, go ahead. Now, this, go ahead, when you're ready. Go ahead. So you see, this is different than what he was doing, and I'm not really doing anything. Doing anything. You're convinced? Yeah. So are you guys convinced that there is something other than, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.